GE Aviation is the world leader in aircraft engines, systems, and materials. It has invested millions of dollars in developing composites used to make lighter and more fuel-efficient aircraft. China's regime has been trying to replicate GE Aviation's jet engine fan blades for many years. It's particularly interested in trade secrets involving aerospace polymetallic composites. Xu Yanjun is a secret agent working for China's Ministry of State Security. His mission was to obtain technical information from aerospace companies in the United States and Europe. Hello everyone, welcome to Lei's Real Talk, I'm Lei. In 2018, the Center for Strategic and International Studies estimated that Chinese economic espionage costs American companies $600 billion. GE Aviation's espionage case is a classic example of how the Chinese Communist Party uses its spy network in concert with academic institutes and private companies to steal trade secrets, as well as how its professional spies work with amateur ones in carrying out espionage. Xu Yanjun is a member of the Chinese Communist Party and has been a spy since 2003. He was promoted multiple times, and the last position he held was deputy director of the 6th Bureau of the Jiangsu Provincial State Security. Using two aliases, she worked undercover as a professor and as a representative from a provincial science and technology NGO. According to his cell phone records, he said to a colleague in 2016, spies like us who focus on aerospace when your superior requested you to obtain American F-22 fighter jet info, you won't get it if you just sit at home. She certainly has not been sitting idle. He is called a spy master by the FBI and was building an international spy network, including Chinese scientists and students in the U.S. And one of them is Ji Chaoqun. Ji came to the United States on a student visa in 2013. He enrolled in a graduate program at the Illinois Institute of Technology to study electrical engineering. Also in 2013, he was introduced to Xu Yanjun. She paid for his trips between the U.S. and China. While in the U.S., Ji obtained personal background information on eight Chinese Americans for Xu. These eight naturalized citizens either specialized in aerospace or had worked for defense contractors. After graduating in 2016, Ji enlisted in the U.S. Army Reserves as an E-4 specialist under the Military Accessions Vital to the National Interest Program. This was probably a step for him to obtain a security clearance. In his application, he lied about his connection with Xu Yanjun. David is a former engineer who was deeply involved in the design and analysis of commercial jet engines at GE Aviation. He's originally from mainland China. In early 2017, he received a message via LinkedIn from a Chinese man called CF. CF identified himself as the Deputy Director of International Cooperation and Exchange at Nanjing University of Aviation and Aerospace, one of China's leading aviation colleges. David and CF began exchanging emails Soon, CF asked David to visit Nanjing to share his GE expertise and invited him on behalf of China's Institute of Energy and Power to speak on the latest developments in the aero engine composite applications, a technology for which GE Aviation is regarded as a world leader. David agreed to give a one-hour presentation with the condition that his employer GE Aviation would need to sign a technical agreement adding that a lot of things can be shared. David ultimately didn't tell GE Aviation about his presentation in China. He told his colleagues that he was going to China for a family wedding, which wasn't true. He downloaded five company documents and brought them with him to China. And less than a week later, on May 26, he landed in Shanghai. On June 2, 2017, David met CF and Xu Yanjun for lunch. She claimed to represent a local science and technology association. After the meal, David left to give his presentation, but he ran into technical difficulties. The school personnel had trouble getting his presentation to work. 
David allowed a school employee to put a USB drive into his laptop. It's unclear if the university got hold of the 5GE documents on his laptop. One day after his presentation in Nanjing, he was back in the United States. GE Aviation is headquartered in Cincinnati, Ohio, and David's trip to China caught the attention of Cincinnati FBI agents. They began investigating in him for taking technical information from GE without authorization and therefore violating U.S. export control laws. On November 1, 2017, five months after David's trip to China, FBI agent searched his home. David was fully cooperative with the investigation. The evidence that the FBI obtained from the LinkedIn account used to contact David exposed ongoing criminal activities and more potential targets of CCP spies. The growing trail of evidence took the FBI deeper into Xu's activities. During the investigation, federal agents gained access to Xu's online accounts and also those used by CF. FBI also obtained a search warrant for an iCloud account that was used by Xu. Messages in the account documented his spy operations and the technologies he wanted to collect. In early January 2018, Xu Yanjun urged David to prepare a second trip to China as soon as possible and promised to give him whatever he asked for. He told David that he would discuss the details in person with him during one of his upcoming business trips to Europe. From January to March 2018, she requested that David download GE records and technical documents regarding engine production design, including a containment analysis of the fan blades. In March, they finalized their plan to meet in Belgium on April 1st. Meanwhile, the U.S. Attorney's Office began preparing indictments against Xu Yanjun and provided them to Belgian authorities. Xu arrived in the St. Catherine district of Brussels and waited for David on April Fool's Day. Ironically, David never showed up. Instead, she was greeted by Belgian police and FBI agents. They confiscated his backpack, which contained cash, for cell phones, memory cards, hard drives, magnetic keys, and car readers. The data on one of the cell phones was wiped out remotely. On another phone, FBI agents found 200 pictures of David and his family while on vacation. They believed that Xu was planning to use the pictures to blackmail David. David lost his $130,000 a year job at GE Aviation and has been driving Uber to make a living. On September 25, 2018, Ji Xiaoqun was arrested in Chicago for acting illegally as a foreign agent in the United States. This was five months after his handler, Xu Yanjun, was indicted. Xu was extradited to the U.S. to stand trial. His case is historic since he's the first Chinese intelligence officer to stand trial in the United States. On November 2nd this year, he was convicted by a federal jury of two counts of conspiracy and attempted economic espionage, each with statutory maximum penalties of 15 years in prison and a fine of up to $5 million. Prosecutors say Xu is part of an extensive conspiracy that dates back to at least 2013 and involves French aviation company Saffron and several others, including directing a Saffron employee to plant malware into Saffron's network. A Saffron project manager testified at the trial that his laptop computer was infected with malware during a visit to China in January 2014. He had traveled there to oversee a joint venture between Saffron and a Chinese company to assemble jet engine parts. I believe this case is only the tip of the iceberg. Chinese Americans aren't the only targets. Western scientists and scholars are targeted too. The most famous one is Dr. Charles Lieber, the head of the Department of Chemistry and Chemical Biology at Harvard University, who was arrested in January 2020 for making false, fictitious, and fraudulent statement about his involvement in China's Thousand Talents plan. By the way, these cases were reported by mainstream media a couple of years ago. You can check the references I provide in the description. That's all for today. I made two videos on honey traps, a common espionage tactic targeting Westerners. 
Here are the links. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.